semi quick how to on keeping your internet running if you lose power um, I don't know about all routers and all cable modems but in this case uh, both of these devices happen to be 12 volts um, I personally like 12 volt things and because you can get a nice handy dandy 5 amp hour uh, 12 volt battery for about 25 bucks um, that will keep devices like this up for well long enough hopefully for your power to come back on if you're not putting too many devices on it but um, this specific application I just made for a router um, but we could just as easily wire the cable modem into this setup Right now, this cable modem is plugged into wall power, but our router is connected in um, to a charge controller. Just a little cheap. This this thing is literally a buck off of eBay, dollar something. Um, and it's meant for a uh, solar setup, but really, if you're putting any kind of power into it, it could substitute for a solar panel. So. To simulate a power loss, we just this is connected to the wall right now. It's it's uh, keeping this battery charged, um, and this between here and here, if I plug that into this cable, then that would just be bridging it uh, straight to the router, just just as if it was the original cable. Um, and you know you could you could uh, mimic this setup if I did mine so I could make it portable um, but you could just as easily not use these banana plugs and you know clamp these little wires right down on these little terminals and have a hardwired setup uh, it just wouldn't be as portable um, I guess you could throw it all in a box or something and just take the whole box out but um, so right now our router's still going, obviously, because it's 12 volts. Now, something to note is uh, right now this router is, is up, um, or this original power supply is, is something like 12 volts, 1,000 milliamps, or 1 amp, if you call it that. Um, you can call it either or. Um, but you've got... Um, you have to consider the power supply for your cable modem also. So, here it goes. Awesome. Um, so, for instance, uh, if this is 12 volt, 1,000 milliamps or 1 amp, and this is 12 volts, 1,000 milliamp or 1 amp, then the power supply uh, for a home application used to charge the battery um, and run these devices at the same time instead of using the stock power supply um, you would you would have to increase it in order to make up the difference so for instance you just find like a, a 12 volt uh, 2 amp power supply so here's some examples of you know how do you get a hold of a 12 volt 2 amp power supply well my answer is yard sale you know A, uh, I don't know, just, just any kind of used stuff that you have hanging around. This one's a uh, 12 volt, 100 milliamps, so it's it's a tiny one. Here's an 18 amp charger, so this would be kind of way, way overkill for it. It would probably work, but then, you know, if you run this thing down too far, like you lose power for a few hours and power finally kicks on and you're delivering... Uh, that's hooked into to this guy, then it's going to charge this battery up possibly too fast, and so it could cause a little damage with that. So you want to you want to try to balance it as close to uh, in our application the the 12 volts, two amps or 2,000 milliamps, um, so it doesn't charge the battery too quickly whenever the power goes back on, um, but it delivers m enough power to uh, charge the battery and run your devices when. It's normally, uh, you know, just normal day's operation.
So here's a here's another one. Uh, 12 volts, 830 milliamps. I don't even know what this came off of. I just collect power supplies um, over the years. There's a 700 milliamp. I don't even have a 2 amp one. So chances are maybe a, uh, a regular, just the power supply that came with one of these would probably work for a while. You might not notice a difference, um, but I tell you that power supply would be giving it all it's got in order to run it, and you probably have a premature burnout of your your power supply. But you know it'll work for a little while. Um, so in this case, if you want to run both of these, then all you really need to do is you know snip this cable however long you wanted it, and then pipe that right into your um, your charge controller. Now the three different setting or three different inputs of this or inputs inputs and outputs of this charge controller, it's pretty easy. This is whatever your charging source is, whether it not whether it be a, a wall power supply or a solar panel even. Um, that's why I made these connections so I could do either or. Uh, this one goes to your battery. You know, it has plus or minus, plus minus. Plus minus, real easy. This, uh, now normally I wire everything like straight off of the battery, but this is a good fail safe for you. And the reason why they have these is at a certain voltage, um, I think it's 10.5, which honestly is lower than I'd ever want to run, be, than anyone should ever <laughs> want to run a battery, but it does uh, protect the battery a little bit whenever it cuts off the voltage, for instance, if you. You're, you're out of power for X number of hours or days. I don't know. I haven't done the math on how long that would run it, but um, it would get down to like 10.5 or so, and then it would just turn it off. So it would kind of save your battery. Um, and that's kind of why I wired it in here. But the um, the other, oh the other thing uh, this power supply that's in the wall, uh, even though it says 12 volts on it. I measured it at 17 volts. So in order to charge a 12 volt battery, you can't just run 12 volts to it. It needs you need to run, you know, over that current. Like your your car charger, I'm sorry, your alternator in your car charges at about 14 and a half volts, and this is running 17 volts. So at a certain voltage, 13.5 or something like that, um, this will Cut, all this charge controller does is bridge the connection between this one and this one. It's like somebody's literally putting these these uh, four wires together, you know, negative to negative and positive to positive. But it, it constantly, um, PWM stands for pulse width modulation, so it, it pulses electricity out to charge it, and then it stops um, and it reads it, which will... Oh, through the camera so we're applying power back to it and so it's going to sense the the power going into it and then it kicks on to charge it and it'll charge it for a certain amount of time certain amount of seconds and then it will read how much voltage is in that battery It'll shut off to read it, and then it'll send another pulse back to it. Um, your pulse, your, your PWM chargers are good for being cheap. Um, the only other, uh, the only other charge controller that I know of is an MPPT, which is a, uh, I think it's multi power point tracking, which is meant for like higher voltage applications. Um, the PWM chargers I heard are better for just lower voltage applications, and, and they also um, kick on the charging at a, a lower um, voltage. Like like if your panels are slightly shaded, but if your panels are giving out any type of voltage whatsoever, if it's if it's higher than the um, the cur the voltage that's in the battery, it will go ahead and kick it on uh, to charge it. So you get. I like PWM a little bit better, but they these generally only go up to like 24 volts, I think. Um, 
And again, I, I deal mostly with just 12 volts. I haven't quite graduated up to our 48 volts. I, I hear that's more efficient. But Oh, and another thing, you can... You can also just kind of use this as like a charging station also for uh, if you want to just have one little tiny um, system that, that you're able to charge your phone on uh, during a power outage, run your internet, that kind of thing, um, you know, where you're using your phone and you'd have to have a separate setup if you want to like charge a laptop or something off of it. But, you know, you could literally you know, put some plugs on the end of these and, and just, you know wire the plus and that minus and then you can just plug your car charger right into it so you have a way to charge your phone and be on the internet at the same time um, but that's that's kind of kind of the grand scheme of this little micro system here um, I uh, hope this helps spark some thought thanks for watching